Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee, weather in five, five days and five minutes. And what you're looking at is a Category 5 Hurricane Dorian. The Hurricane Center on their 8 a.m. advisory just upgraded it to a Category 5. Maximum sustained winds are 160 miles an hour. There's an Air Force reconnaissance aircraft there right now. And the pressure that I just saw was 927 millibars. Uh, so we are at Category 5 status, and it, it'll probably hold it for a, a, at least through the next 20, 24 hours. While it's moving, it's over the open waters, uh, you'll it, be able to maintain that strength. But once it slows down and stalls for a little bit, uh, then you may see a little bit of uh, upwelling going on, and uh, you'll start to see it maybe come down off that peak. But that's that's it really is uh, just um amazing to watch something like this this absolute animal of a storm that is moving westward okay we're going to check out a few other maps starting with tropical storm warnings that are up right now for florida from deerfield beach northward to uh, Sebastian Inlet, which includes West Palm Beach, Boca Raton, Port St. Lucie, uh, and uh, falls just short of Palm Bay and Melbourne. And we have a watch that's up south of Deerfield Beach uh, down to uh, Hollywood. Pompano Beach on the watch side, Boca Raton is on the warning side. And meanwhile, out to the east, you can see some of the radar echoes. And also the core of the hurricane is coming into range just to the uh, east of Great Abaco Island. Uh, this is going to impact that island and Grand Bahama Island directly, or the storm is going to take the next two days to basically uh, transverse about a 150, 180 mile stretch of uh, water and these islands. So they're going to experience category five hurricane conditions for nearly two days. Uh, this is going to be uh, devastating for many of these areas, uh, and make no mistake. And then we'll see, it's a question of how close it gets to the co coast before it makes the turn. The hurricane center basically brings the center of the hurricane about, about or in just inside 60 miles of the core of the, the eye of the storm, uh, about 60 miles uh, inside uh, the, off the Florida East Coast which would bring tropical storm conditions up the coastline. And you'll notice on their latest forecast how tight those M's are. That literally is movement from this morning, 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. Tuesday. And it then starts to turn to the north, still is a major hurricane. And on their forecast, at least for, for now, the uh, hurricane makes another turn as it approaches the South Carolina coast and comes very close to the outer banks of North Carolina, and that's by 2 a.m. Friday. So we're going to be dealing with this all week long. And again, there is still a high degree of uncertainty. We're threading a very, very fine needle here as far as landfall is uh, the potential for landfall on the Florida East Coast. Uh, 26.5, 76.5 on the coordinates. Again, a 160 mile an hour winds moving to the west at eight miles an hour. Now, I've got two radar views as of 8 a.m., two local radar views, just to give you an idea of what's happening now. And if you didn't know there was a, a Category 5 hurricane out there, you certainly wouldn't be able to tell by the radar view, as you're seeing just typical scattered showers uh, on the western periphery of a hurricane. But you could, you could see this on any given morning to see some scattered showers coming in from the east off the Florida coast. Uh, that's the Melbourne radar and the Miami, Miami radar about the same. And you can see the, the in their range is um, part of Grand Bahama Island there that uh, is visible on the Miami radar. But so far, at least there, because that's the westernmost island, uh, you're not seeing... Uh, much, uh, you're not seeing hardly anything in terms of uh, radar echo returns. Now, here's the Air Force reconnaissance aircraft that's there now, and it, it has made its first pass uh, into Dorian, 928 millibars. And if you look at the wind barbs, uh, there are a few of those wind barbs that are showing winds in excess of 137 knots. The plane icon in the upper right is it just made this first pass, so you can follow the path in. 
through the eye, and then the uh, plane now makes a left turn and will come back in uh, to make another pass into the eye. And of course, in this time frame, the eye has moved however many miles, and they'll take another pressure reading, and they'll do this several times. So they're able to see uh, uh, what the motion is and whether there is uh, strength, is there, if there's still strengthening going on. We've seen Dorian lose pressure overnight, probably at the rate of a little over one millibar an hour. It might drop a little bit more, uh, but the bottom line is it's a Category Five hurricane. It, it can't really, it can't really. It's pushing the upper envelope of how strong uh, it can get. I guess that's the best way to put it. Now, with respect to some tracks, what I've done here is I've pulled up. Uh, the models that are on the opposite ends of the envelope, the one that is furthest east and the one that is furthest to the west, the model that, and every all the other ones are somewhere in between. Uh, the uh, NAM model is the one that is furthest to the east. And this model actually takes it far enough offshore that the Florida East Coast would basically get grazed and maybe some fringe gales would touch. Uh, this really doesn't get much uh, past uh, 70 77, 78 west, so it would be a, a little over 100 miles offshore, maybe 120 miles offshore uh, before it starts to move on toward the north. And of course, you're starting to see uh, on the last few frames here, uh, this is, if you, the date on that at the end of it is Wednesday afternoon, 2 p.m., and you're seeing uh, uh, squalls coming into uh, South the South Carolina and Georgia coast, uh, but uh, until then, uh, this model, the NAM, uh, keeps uh, it offshore. Uh, the uh, this model is the Icon model, which is a model from Germany, and uh, it uh, it's kind of hit or miss with this in terms of a forecast tool. Sometimes it can do pretty well, and other times it can be way off. This, along with the Canadian model and a couple of others. Uh, bringing the hurricane on shore, and uh, this one is the furthest west, bringing it in probably very cl uh, close to or just north of Deer uh, Deerfield Beach, and then turn moving it inland uh, parallel to the coastline uh, on northward. The last frame on this is also Wednesday afternoon, 2 p.m. So you can see how long this is take, going to take from the position that it is now to where it winds up on Wednesday. We're only talking about a couple of hundred miles. And of course, we have, um, I have the GFS model here uh, to look at. And this one overnight actually got a, maybe a little bit closer. It seems like each run, there's there's been sort of an inching back westward. Uh, it probably gets to within, if I can do a quick measuring here very fast, uh, it's at 79.4 and the coastline is roughly at 80.2 so you're talking about maybe 40 50 miles where the eye the center of the storm passing just offshore by about 40 or 50 miles so that would certainly put the florida east coast into some heavier rains and uh, gales right along the immediate coast uh, where starting from where the warnings up and then more than likely would have to be extended further north uh, the uh, storm as it moves northward is going to do two things. It's going to see its wind field expand some, and you're going to see the rain uh, shield expand. Uh, the storms normally do expand as they move northward in terms of the geography. So you're going to go from this really tight core uh, storm that we have right now, uh, relatively small in geography with a small core, to one that's going to be expanding and covering more geography. Now, this will ca cause the strongest winds to come gradually come down, but you'll have a larger area that will be impacted uh, by it with respect to wind. And I'll just give you the view longer term. I haven't really looked at this. As we move it northward, it in some ways, when I saw it last night, I kept thinking winter, the way winter storms look sometimes with the rain. And this is what happens as they slowly begin to morph into uh, systems that are more non-tropical than tropical. You see the rain shield expand on the western side of the storm. And it does uh, bring it up rather close to some of the rains. 
And uh, the, the main uh, uh, thrust of this is going to pass by well, would pass by well to the south and east of New Jersey and Long Island, but it does certainly bring some rain now up further north on the coast. I haven't really done a whole lot of analysis with regards to what's going to happen in the longer term. Uh, the the uh, GFS, uh, the European, and a few other models are up in this idea for the end of the, this would be for the end of the week. Uh, but uh, certainly an argument could be made that you could take this in, up along the coastal Carolinas and it would make a sharp right turn after that. It does seem that we're going to be dealing with another needle threading event for the Carolinas and uh, not so much, maybe not so much for the Georgia coast, but um, for the South and North Carolina coast, uh, we might see this far enough west where it crosses into uh, coastal South, uh, coastal North Carolina certainly over the Outer Banks or maybe just west of the Outer Banks uh, later on this week. We have a lot of time to figure that part of the game out. Uh, there, there are just, uh, there's one other thing I want to leave you with, and I want to hopefully the new ones are out. So these are the hurricane tracking models. And interestingly, even though the global models are actually to the left, these models are clustered to the right. And they're all they're all offshore even up into the carolinas you've got a couple of outliers that are making various landfalls and taking various different tracks but the cluster of them remain offshore now this was from over uh, early overnight uh, there's usually a new one out by this time and i'm hoping that it will be there and unfortunately it is not so we're just kind of left uh with um uh, the overnight ones, and uh, we'll we'll just have to uh, see what they do when they come out. I'll I'll uh, pull post something up uh, about them. So uh, it's all about the Bahamas and Florida from uh, from uh, this point on, and we're going to be updating uh, throughout the day. But here's what the schedule is going to be for me. I'll do a regular YouTube live stream at noon, uh, and uh, then we'll I'll also probably do another weather in five sometime this evening and there will be website posts going up uh, in between uh, our weather from uh, northeast virginia to southern new england today is absolutely great we're going to have no worse than partly sunny skies i didn't even include the chance of a shower we probably will have the chance for a shower or a thunderstorm on monday as the weather front approaches and then we have a second front that will be coming through late wednesday with a shower or storm and that one is going to be important because that is going to play into uh, whatever Hurricane Dorian decides to do uh, down the road. So keep it tuned right here. Let me just also uh, remind you that there's additional weather coverage that's going to be going on on my weather platform on Patreon. It's a subscription platform, uh, and it just uh, starts at $2 a month. Uh, and that's at patreon.com slash meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Of course, those of you who have downloaded the app, if you have the app, if you have an Android device, um, play, make sure that you have the latest updated version of the app. Your local forecast should automatically go to your uh, location. Uh, and that was one of the changes that we made on it. Uh, unfortunately, we're still waiting for it to show up on, uh, on Apple, uh, Apple the, or the iPhone. Uh, the, the Apple takes forever. And by the way, uh, I'll leave you with considering the possibility, if you'd like to uh, support the app, uh, you can become a Facebook supporter by uh, clicking the Become a Supporter button that is on this Facebook post. It's just 99 cents a month, and it goes a long way in keeping ads on the app to an absolute minimum. Uh, I thank you for those who have done so, um, and uh, please, if you would like, uh, it's there for you, but otherwise the app is free. And, uh, of course, you can also support it by joining my Patreon platform. Well, Weather in 5 turned into Weather in 15 today, so we'll update you a bit later on. Enjoy your Sunday and the rest of your Labor Day holiday weekend.